All right, so I made a little React challenge video uh, the other day, and the approach I took, it works, but I don't think it's the best approach. And the reason it's not the best approach is because I use an effect. If you read the docs in React, the new uh, React docs, this is a good article you should try reading, and I want to give a shout out to the person in the comments who kind of pointed me to this article. I think I skimmed over it before, and I understood like the concepts of it. I never really took the time to really read through it, though, to be honest. But it's a good article, and it says you might not need an effect, right? And the idea is you should probably think twice before using an effect. And if you do use an effect, the main reason that use effect is there is so that you can synchronize with some type of external system. And they say in the docs, if there is no external system involved, um, you should not use an effect. So that's the main takeaway. So I worked on this little keypad challenge, and basically you can type in four letters or four numbers, and if you get the password right, um, it'll say correct. If you get it wrong, it says bad password. So let's just do a correct 4299. There we go. So that's all it is. But let me show you the code of how this works. Um, basically, we have an effect here. And this is like the, the code smell that I probably shouldn't have done in the last video. So I apologize for anyone watching that trying to learn React. Probably don't follow that approach. This code also could be really cleaned up. Um, sometimes when I do code challenges live, I just do the first thing that comes ahead. And the first thing that comes to my head is usually the wrong thing. Uh, or not the most optimized thing. Let's look at what's wrong with this. Basically, when a user clicks on one of these buttons, we append a number to a string here, right? So we keep track of what password that the user is typing in. And we keep checking every time that a new number is appended here, we have an effect that fires to kind of change the state of the component, right? So for example, if you typed in four characters and that's the same length as the password or the expected password, then we check to see if like we should show an error or we should show uh, is correct. Okay, so just a lot of stuff going on. But the main takeaway is that this stuff can live directly in the callback listener if you want to, right? So instead of using effect and listening for this numbers pressed, what we should probably do and what React documentation recommends doing is you can make a function up here. So I could convert this to a function. Um, and I could say like handle number clicked. Okay. And then I'm going to get rid of the effect here like that. And we're going to go down here and we're going to call this and we're going to pass in the number that was actually clicked. Okay. Let's go up here and let's add a number string um, like that. So the reason this is a better approach is that the on click callback is synchronous. So whatever state this thing is trying to access when it gets invoked will be the latest greatest state. And it kind of simplifies the code because using the effect can just get a little bit unwieldy. So let's refactor this code a little bit and see if there's a way that we could potentially make this better. So I'm going to go ahead and say that const new, um, <clears throat> I'll say updated pressed numbers is equal to press numbers. Because remember, this is synchronously ran and press numbers will be the latest value of that state variable. So we can just do it like this and I'm just going to append the number with the plus sign and then I'll say set press numbers and I'll just update that. Okay, so this is like the this is a good way you can do it. And then at this point what we could do is we can kind of do some of this logic as well. So like we just need to kind of change all this to use the updated press numbers. And let's also take this a step further. Is there anything that we can do to make this a little bit cleaner? So what I think I might actually do is I'm going to try to treat this as like a state machine. There's like three three states to this. There is, you're currently typing in the password, there is currently an error, or you got it correct. So those are the three states. I think if we utilize some type of like states, so I'll just say like state, states is equal to typing error or success, right? And then what we could potentially do is we could just make a state variable here. I'll call this like passcode state. That passcode state is equal to uState. And we're going to go ahead and just put typing. And we want to type this as a type of states. Might, I might rename this to just states. That needs to be a type. This could get rid of. OK, so I'm still waking up. It's a little bit early. So now, instead of keeping track of the error and is correct and all this stuff, what we could potentially do is if we just delete these, we could just change the state based on different criteria. So when this thing is first loaded up, we are going to be in the typing state. So I will just go ahead and say 
if this is equal to error, then we will display a message that says bad password. Okay, so that's one step in the right direction. Um, if we are in the... And then over here, instead of is correct, I can say if we are in the success state, we'll show success. And then otherwise, I mean, we'll just show the number pad always, okay? This is complaining because it needs to be a string. So bear with me, I'm still trying to like wrap my head around if I'm doing this correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the number of characters that you've typed in is equal to the number of characters that are in a password, we could be in two different states here. So I'm going to go ahead and say like, um, I'm going to rearrange this code a little bit to kind of make this easier in my head. Some people like doing the early returns. Um, but I like kind of doing this because I think it makes more sense. So if the password is equal to the expected password, I might actually rename this to expected password. I'm going to say set passcode state equals to success. Don't need the error. Don't need that. Otherwise, we will set it to error. So then I can also say if we are in the error state, so if passcode state is equal to error, and someone just clicked on a number, then we're going to go ahead and just set the state to typing. Okay. So now this should hopefully work. There we go. Four, two, nine, nine. So the same logic, it still works, but I think this is a little bit cleaner. So on my Discord, there's another YouTuber called Voided Name who kind of gave me some more suggestions. Go check him out. His channel has some really interesting, deeper level uh, software stuff if you guys are interested in. But he gave me some feedback that says like, hey, you might not even need to have state here. Like this could potentially be a derived state based on the number of things you've pressed and like what you're doing. So let's see if we can take this a step further to make this state be derived. Let's see if we can refactor this a little bit to use a computed um, or a derived state. So by default, I'm going to set this to typing. And then I'm going to say if press numbers dot length is equal to four, I'm sorry, if it's equal to the expected password dot length, then we'll say passcode state is equal to, uh, then we need to do this other check to basically do this stuff. So I'll just go ahead and put uh, this logic in here. I'll say, go ahead and do this. And then I'll say passcode state is equal to success. And then I'll say passcode state is equal to error. Make sure you make this a let so we can reassign it. So let's try this out. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but uh, let's try it out. Let's just delete some of this stuff. So I think we do need to reset the press numbers back to zero at some point. So like, I think we still need this check here. Um, like if the numbers length is equal to this, uh, plus one maybe. So if you typed in five, then we're just going to set this equal to number. Okay, and I think there might be a way just to do all this directly inside the state callback. So like I could probably say like previous and then you just return. If the current length is equal to the expected length, then let's just return the number. Otherwise we'll return previous plus number. Okay, I know I'm jumping around. Don't know if this is right. So basically, every time we append numbers onto it, we're just um, changing the default. Let's see if this works. So one, two, three, four. We got that password four two nine nine. Yeah, so this this still works perfectly fine. Okay, so now we don't even have like this state over here. So I should probably type this as well as a states. All right, so that is my refactoring of the challenge I did yesterday. I did get feedback from other people in my Discord. So it's up to you. Do you think this is a cleaner approach? Do you think just using the derived state and changing the board like this is a better approach? Or did you like it better where state was kind of explicitly stored inside of a use state hook? Anyway, feel free to leave a comment if you have a better suggestion of how some of this code uh, could be written. But I do think this is a much cleaner approach. At the very least, there is no more use effect. And like I mentioned, spend, spend an hour, read through this, make sure you understand all the examples of when you should and should not use use state. 
I think it's definitely important if you're trying to use React um, because they have a ton of examples of when you should just avoid this entirely. Okay, very good article. Definitely recommend reading through it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Have a good day and happy coding.